the Steam Deck. It's a masterwork of a device. From its modular, user-friendly design that's highly repairable, to its Linux-based operating system, the deck makes for an excellent hobby project. As such, Valve has made it super easy to tinker with the Steam Deck, too, enabling developers around the world to create entirely new user experiences. And one such user experience that tinkerers have built? The Steam Deck Plugin Loader. So what is it? Well, at its surface, it's a way to add plugins that will enhance the Steam Deck experience, such as being able to customize the fan or CPU, limit the number of threads being used by the APU, automatically enable night mode at the appropriate time of day, remotely log into your deck from your desktop, and many other neat features. But under the surface, it goes deeper, and we'll get to that in a second. First though, let's talk about how to get these plugins installed. First, you'll need the plugin loader. Installing and using plugins requires plugin loader, which you'll find a link to down in the description. And in order to install the plugin loader, we'll actually need to enable developer mode on our Steam Deck, and then enable CEF remote debugging. The first step is to press the Steam button while in game mode, and then go to setting. Under system, scroll down to system settings, and then enable dev mode with the appropriate toggle. A new option should be available at the bottom of the slider, Developer. Go to it. Now under miscellaneous, toggle CEF Remote Debugging On. Note that many people think that enabling dev mode in the Steam Deck settings is the same thing as unlocking the file system. This is not the case. It's perfectly safe to enable developer mode on your Steam Deck without unlocking the file system. Now we'll need to go to desktop mode. Open a terminal, which you may want to have a keyboard attached for, and set a root password with the passwd command. You'll be prompted to create a new password if you haven't already, and after that, input this command. I'm not going to read it out loud because that takes too long. You'll be asked to enter the password you just created earlier. And that's it. Let the installation go through and then you'll be set up with the plugin loader. The next step is to actually get plugins. Now, once you switch back to game mode, you should now have a new icon in the quick access menu. As of version 1.3 of the plugin loader, we no longer have to manually copy plugins over in desktop mode. If you tap the little shopping bag icon in the top right, you'll be taken to the plugin store. You can see all of the plugins available, what they do, and if you tap the blue install button, it will install the plugin that you just selected. If you want an older version of the plugin for whatever reason, you can tap the arrow icon on the right of the plugin and select a version from the dropdown list. If you wish to copy the plugins over manually, just download the plugin from the project's GitHub page while in desktop mode and extract the plugin to Home Deck Homebrew Plugins. Once a plugin is installed, it should now appear in the quick access menu, and from here you can tap the plugin for more options. There are a few plugins that myself and my writer Mark actually recommend. Uh, we're both making use of here on our Steam Decks. Uh, the first is CSS Loader, which can change the colors of toggles and also features a Switch-like library toggle that makes the home menu look more like the Nintendo Switch's UI. There's also the More Library Icons toggle, which can be a bit glitchy at times when browsing through Steam games. If you're familiar with CSS, you can also add your own themes as well. Now, one of my personal favorites is Auto Night Mode. This helps when you're in bed and you don't want to have to manually toggle Night Mode every time you want to use the device when it's dark in the room. This helps reduce eye strain. And it's weird that the Steam Deck natively supports turning off Night Mode in the morning, but doesn't automatically turn it on in the evening. But I guess that's where plugins come in. Next is Quick Launch. Useful for running any flat pack based application that you have installed on your handheld without having to go into desktop mode and adding a shortcut for the app on Steam. Then we have Power Tools. If you want to have absolute control over fan speed, uh, limit the number of threads in the APU, or change the max frequency, it's super useful. It's also useful if you want to squeeze as much battery life out of your games as you can. But be careful, you might overheat your system if you limit the fan speed too much. Next up we have extra settings. This allows you to enable SSH, which in turn can do SFTP, and you can also enable uh, transparent huge pages. 
Supposedly, with the ladder enabled, it can lead to better performance improvements, but Mark, my writer, uh, benchmarked both Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Grid 2019, and the difference was so small, two frames a second at maximum, that it's frankly not going to be that useful. But the SSH feature is great for running terminal commands on the device with a remote desktop. And finally, we have deck battery, which is useful if you want detailed stats about the battery. Now, this isn't all the plugins that are available, and you can find more at plugins.deckbrew.xyz. And it seems like all of them are open source. But there is one little annoyance that I have with the plugin loader at the moment. Unlike the rest of the quick access menu, the plugin selection does not seem to work with the buttons on the controller. You can only use touch or mouse input for now. Just keep that in mind. And hey, while you're here, why not like that smash button and smash that subscribe button? That'll keep you up to date with all the awesome stuff we're doing here on the channel. We're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the summer, and I think with your help, we can do it. And thanks. So what happens if you have an idea for a plugin and you just want to make it? Well, there's some bare bones documentation that's available, but you can also make use of the plugin template to get started. But you will need some Python and HTML skills. When publishing your plugin, you can put it under whatever license you prefer. And I'm definitely looking forward to some robust documentation when they've finalized their specification, as my team and I definitely have the skills required to build some awesome plugins. Do you have an idea for a plugin? Is there one that exists that we haven't talked about? Let us know in the comments. But let's talk about what the Steam Deck plugin loader actually is on a more technical level. First, it's a system D service that lives in the background, monitoring the plugins you have installed and listening for events from the Steam Deck UI. This is written in Python, as the plugins are as well, and utilizes the Steam Deck's built-in remote debugging to work with the Steam Deck UI. But it's also a website that hosts the community-made plugins plugins.deckbrew.xyz. And finally, it's a community of passionate and talented folks who really love the Steam Deck. And who can blame them? It's pretty rad. I think that's gonna do it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna give a special shout out to Matt Dancer, one of my top tier Singularity members on Patreon. It's because of folks like Matt that I've been able to build this show into what it is today. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to become a Linux warrior, just like Matt, use the links below to become a YouTube member or a patron. It's all greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you all have a blessed day and I'll see you next time.